Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back, and hello everybody new to the channel. Today, I have for you the first of many to come, in which I play frontline solo while discussing my thought process and tactics. And we are starting off strong, playing the Bard on Seal Rock, a role which is a rather decent pick when going against the meta of Dark Knight, Dragoons, and Astrologians. A role with a fast-firing silence ability, powerful burst combined with a limit break ideal for counter-pushing. Made for a terrific action field round, landing 11 kills to 1.3 million damage. This match really highlights the importance of the battle high. As years of experience has taught me, no matter how far your team is behind on score, battle highs allow you and your team to trounce the opposition. Thanks for tuning in, enjoy the video, and I shall see you all in the next one. Before the match even begins, I knew we are in for a tough round. With the map layout of Seal Rock, Spawn camping in the North Spawn is very common and to be expected, so I already know my team needs to be more on the aggressive side. A good sign, as right at the start of the match, my team moves as one south across the beach. Here we run into the Adders, who are much more aggressive in their push. Opening with the typical Dark Knight rush, my aim here is simple, keep distance and punish those who veer away from the pack. Should I see the chance to punish weaker roles, such as the ranged classes, I will. However, the tank spam, combined with a flank from the Maelstrom, left little chance. Right now, it is play to survive, do not feed into early battle highs, as myself and the team slowly fall back to spawn, which, as strange as it might sound, put us in a great position. Not only does this force our team to regroup, but those respawning will be immortal for a short time, which led to the start of our stronger counter push. This is where the counter begins. My first target is the ninja, a tough role to deal with. However, with a good use of bind and silence, my team could make quick work of him. And right after, the adders show just how overconfident they really are. I drop back, putting distance between myself and their gunbreaker's limit break, in order to use my very own. This boosted our counter play with 10% faster cooldowns, 25% more movement speed, while also granting a 10% damage buff, while at the same time charging our allies' limit breaks. Very quickly, the adders become outmatched, and in doing so, I land my first kill on the Machinist, soon after the Maelstrom join in, in order to third party. However, now, my team had both the aggression and momentum, and we rush through the gate, snagging easy kills along the way. This push was not without resistance, as the adders, during their retreat, cut through mid. Their Dark Knight dives right in, at which point I pop my guard to avoid the initial burst of any follow-up damage, giving me the time to line up my elusive jump to open the gap. And now the adders have gotten confused with their own push, dividing between both teams. This means we are now free to continue the push, forcing them to group up in the choke for easy damage. Note how I look around, checking for any Maelstrom sneaking around while also hugging the wall for natural cover. With my team now together in the choke, I pop Limit Break. Even though it did not see much use in terms of damage bonus, those nearby could still gain valuable Limit Gauge Charge. Looking up at the minimap, I can now see that my team is now divided, with the Maelstrom trying to push back. Getting stuck in this choke would be a guaranteed death, so we retreat. The Adders held back with their defense on the objective, giving us the free reign to push through Cave, picking off those who are left behind. With the Maelstrom both distracted by the Adders and respawning, we can safely claim the Cliff Node, and this is where we want to slow down, hold this objective and delay those attempting to retake. This gave us the time to make a valuable score we were denied within the first few minutes. Yeah. 
you will notice I open up my map to get a good view of how the teams are spread out, while also checking how long the node has left. Once it is almost finished, you need not worry even should they push. They would not be able to retake in time, and there would be no value in doing so. But for now, we hold ready for either new nodes to spawn or for the chance to group up in a large team fight. With both the Adders and the Maelstrom completely locked in by one another, we are free to deal some revenge with our own third party. I still hold distance to make sure I do not overextend. With allies at my back, we were able to snag some kills from both sides, until the Maelstrom managed to group up, sending us into a full retreat. During the retreat, I stay far enough away to avoid being snagged, but close enough to support my allies trying to escape. Once in the clear, we can mount up and push the Adders to the south who must now defend three nodes against two teams. I can ignore the new node as somebody else will grab it, and I am sure it is safe from the Maelstrom, who are also heading south. I want to be there as soon as possible with the team, to firstly secure the cliff node. The sooner we claim this one, the sooner we can rush into a new team fight. And this is where we not only catch up, but we take the lead. Taking it slow and picking off those out of position, we were able to stick around for quite a while, and my team are doing rather well at obtaining battle highs. My one and only death comes shortly after when using my limit break in an attempt to aid the team. I shall let this fight play out, that way you can watch to see how I went about this fight, and how quickly things can turn bad. I so very nearly got away, however this outcome was not all that bad. Did you notice how many limp breaks they invested against so few players? I waste no time rushing back. Looking at the scores, we are entering the end game. Now is the time to go for objectives more so than kills. 
maintain that lead and allow them to come to us. The glance at the map earlier let me know both the adders and the maelstrom are pushing from the same direction. So the best way to hold this objective is not by sitting still and waiting, but to instead hold by doing a small counter push. Hold them back away from the objective. Even should they win the fight, it adds up to extra valuable objective time. In doing so, the Maelstrom are forced to retreat, pinched between both us and the Adders. They open up with their only strat, Dark Knight Rush, and begin getting rather aggressive. This tells me they are feeling confident, which normally means a lot of limit breaks are coming our way. My aim now is to hold back and pump damage and interrupts into those who rush in first. Not only did this thin down the Adders team, but by the time they reached the objective, there was nothing left to claim. They then made one major mistake. Rather than fight as a group while retreating as a team, many of them divided off and straight up fled. This drastically weakens their position, allowing us to walk through killing majority of their team. This gave us a rather nice score boost, and some valuable battle highs, which played a big impact towards the end of the match. as RNG was on the Maelstrom side, spawning 1A rank and 2S ranks within their own spawn. Even so, I had zero doubt. I knew this game was ours. We just rid the adders of many battle highs, and the Maelstrom have been struggling with fights the entire match. They now have to hold off two teams within their own spawn, with my team sporting quite a few 100 battle highs, and this last battle really highlights how powerful battle highs truly are. Just watch as the Maelstrom score hardly moves for the next few minutes during which we claim zones and many kills, forcing them further back into their own spawn. The adders are no longer a threat after that beach battle, so now is the time to mix aggressive pushes with patience. Hold the lead, get any free score you can, and to not get cocky, one ego push from the team could easily have flipped the match back to the maelstrom.